everyone, it's Ross, and today I want to take you guys on a little bit of a harvest tour. Uh, we're going to just be harvesting different things and bringing them in the house and eating them at different points. So far we have a lot of Mara de Bois strawberries, and, I'll, you know, and we also have blueberries here, and I'll talk about each individual thing as I go, but to start off, the, the Mara de Bois strawberries, when they turn very red, this one doesn't look too good. But you always have to pick the fruit that doesn't look too good, even if uh, you don't want to eat it. Um, but this one's quite red, and if I bite into this one... It has a very intense strawberry flavor that uh, I've only found in alpine strawberries, which are more wild-type strawberries. And this one is just blows my mind. Uh, it's got like a Concord grape, almost like a grape flavor to it. It really does. Uh, I mean, it is a strawberry, like you obviously know, but there's a whole other weird flavor that's really, really good. So the Mara de Bois, hands down, my best strawberry. Uh, compared to the Early Glow, which I've talked about at great length, my Early Glow is a June Bang strawberry, which will only bear for about a month and a half. And that strawberry tastes very typical of strawberry. Whereas this one here in the front of the house is an ever-bearing type. Um, it's quite prolific, it grows quite well, but the, the plants are pretty young, which is why the, the strawberries are a little small. But the flavor is unrivaled. And here we have the tomatoes that we're gonna pick. And this is a sun peach up here. I think we only really wanna pick the really right ones because I'm out here every day and this is more of a pink cherry tomato, believe it or not. Um, and since I'm out here every day, we don't need to really pick the pick a bunch of these at the same time. We're only going to pick things that are very ripe. So that that way, tomorrow I can come out here and do the same thing over and over again. Every single day I'll come out here, guys, and harvest a bunch of tomatoes, figs, strawberries, blueberries. The blueberries are now finishing up. But it's really nice to have food that you can just pick from and have it fresh right then and there. And the majority of what we're going to harvest today, I will be eating um, at some point soon, like usually today. Uh, this one here is called Clementine. This is a more of a salad type tomato, but um, it really is good raw. My girlfriend recommended this one that I grow it this year. And uh, not a bad idea, honestly. It's been quite good. This, See, this one down here, this one in my hand is a bit more red than the one in my, um, my by my thumb here. So I'm not going to pick that one. These tomatoes really develop full flavor like any other thing when they're perfectly picked, you know. If I have such abundance... Of different fruits and vegetables why should I pick them when they're underripe you know even this um, green zebra I could have let hang for a little bit longer but um, I do want an heirloom tomato in the house to eat for today um, we have some mountain magic back there which are not quite ready we also have some other heirlooms that are just now coming up you can see there's a pole here and a pole there so we still have a few tomatoes that really haven't done anything for us this year. We have really a crazy abundance of tomatoes. Um, there's even some on the side of the house. In three, I have tomatoes in three different locations, but this one right here, I like to uh, clip these two. So I'm going to put you guys down for just one second. We're going to clip them. Maybe you guys can see me do this. I don't know. Sorry for the camera work. What's interesting about that one is if I had just ripped that off, I would have lost quite a bit of tomatoes because it's attached to flowers. Oh, this one's hard to reach. All right, guys, sorry about that. You don't want to, and I'll show you exactly what I meant. See, we clipped this off right here. But if I had just ripped this off, it would have probably took this whole thing with it, which is future fruits. 
you know, we have plenty of future fruits up here, but these guys have yet to, uh, to fruit, and you can see the very, very small tomato in there. So we just harvested a Black Prince, and we harvested a mortgage lifter. And uh, since we get some little bit of rain coming in, it's better to harvest these heirloom tomatoes now rather than later. I know it sucks, and we want to let things go as long as possible. Um, for those of you who have a garden, have space to garden, we have things coming up down in, in here underneath the peach trees now for a fall crop. And if you haven't done this, you need to get on it. These are my snap peas, and boy are they good. We also have some shallots that my friend Brian sent me. Thank you, Brian. It's a very tasty uh, onion type vegetable that people in the south love to cook with. We also have some nasturtium flour, and uh, you can see that on the nasturtiums we have just riddled with uh, aphids. Better the nasturtiums than my trees, I guess. But I like to just eat the flour, just raw. It's really good. Floral, peppery. There is a little sweetness in there in the beginning, but I like to just eat that. Just like that, guys. Going along here, we don't really have much going on. The apples were picked off by birds prematurely. We get a whole full grape harvest we also harvested some honeyberries earlier this year. We harvested our potatoes in these little raised beds. There's not much going on. And then over here, we have our um, soybeans. And I've made edamame out of these soybeans on numerous pickings, probably on six, six different occasions. And I can come in here quite soon because a lot of these plants are going to die now. And we can do our final harvest of soybeans and make uh, really, really tasty edamame. We also have mint down here, should I so choose. This is a mint flower that I don't want to reseed itself everywhere, so we're gonna take that off. And there's even some back in here I need to take care of. You can see the grapevines are everywhere. But uh, there's also some rosemary down here that is growing quite nicely. We'll get a nice harvest off of this before the end of the year we'll dry it and then that way I'll have rosemary all year round. Same thing with the mint, I've been doing that. We also have many different types of lettuces coming in. These are uh, Hakurai turnips, some more of them. I love these damn turnips. We also have beets coming up in here that uh, don't appear to be doing too hot but um, they are coming up. We also have uh, Swiss char that we could harvest at this baby stage. It's actually quite good. We have, we reseeded some Swiss char. A lot of it's not coming up like it did in the spring, and I think a lot of that has to do with the lack of water. But uh, definitely some things to be harvesting here. We have some watermelons coming in. And uh, I'm kind of just waiting for the stem to turn because the the tendril on the other side is kind of dead, but I know for a fact this thing's probably not ready. But anyway, let's find more things to harvest, guys, on the other side of the yard. We just put a goji berry plant in there. See that pole? Uh, we have been getting goji berries all year. We decided let's stick it in the ground. It's one less container to deal with. But if we come over here towards the figs, we have many figs ripening, guys. Put this down, show you guys. You can see in here, this is Ron de Bordeaux. It's the best I can give you. We also have uh, Smith coming in now, turning color. We have LSU Tiger in the back, turning color. This is Canadria that I've been keeping track of. Very beautiful fig. And then we also have Italian 258 coming in and raspberry latte. So you guys will probably see fig reviews on these um, because they're really, really good figs. And if we can see here, my lettuce bed is actually doing, or my um, one of my other garden beds is doing quite well. We've reseeded new brassicas in here and we have cabbage that's still trying to produce heads. We have uh, Brussels sprouts in here. We have tons of corn that I put in here in an effort to try to get a late season crop of corn. And the figs are growing. 
this little bit of growth here, see this, uh, this green growth? That's almost a foot of growth, and I shit you not, only maybe two weeks. And then we also have the figs that I planted as cuttings, just stuck cuttings in the ground. These guys are really, really taken off. So, pretty cool. What other figs do we have that I can harvest right now that I want to eat? Well, we do have Azores Dark. You can see it's getting some nice cracking, but I want to wait for sure. I've, I've uh, picked too many of those too soon this year. And uh, I know how good they are if you just wait. So we're going to be waiting on that. And You know, a lot of figs are now, when I came home this weekend, a lot of them are turning color. You can see down in here, LSU Champagne, a lot of them are really turning color at really the same time. It's pretty incredible. We have Mary Lane Seedless that's turning color now. Um, pretty soon, guys, we're going to be in so many figs that we're not going to know what to do with them all. We have uh, Brandon Street Unknown down in here ripening, as well as Yellow Nietzsche's, which I think I can maybe even pick. Um, I think I am going to pick it. Let's pick this guy. Yellow Nietzsche's. I know my friend, uh, my friend who gave me this told me that you want to make sure that the skin is about pale yellow if it's really ripe. If you pick it green and soft, then it's um, how he likes it. What else do we have? We have uh, Fico Love down in here that actually has two figs on it that may ripen before the end of this season. Probably will. And then we also have up here to trace Splace, and I really love this fig, especially picked a bit early. So we'll pick... Um, a few of these here and it's tough picking these figs <laughs> oh dude it's so much work guys <laughs> it's honestly the best fruits I'm telling you our uh, our harvest is getting larger I must say uh, you know and you really could make this I hate when people make harvest videos and they just pick every single thing in existence that they have. And then, you know, like a week later, they just have no food. Okay, so this one here, this to trace this place, guys. Forced to pick it because it's uh, it's actually getting rotten and spoiled on the tree. Perhaps there's SWD in here? I don't know, but we need to pick, make sure that we take this fruit away before the SWD completes its life cycle. Uh, we don't want this attracting any more bad insects. Uh, we did harvest the petite albique off of this tree last night. But you can see down in here, guys. Woo! That's a lot of pretty fruits, right? Let's see if there's anything more. Now, nah, we're still about three days off on the majority of those fruits. You can see I also have some figs dropping off. That really stinks. It is what it is. Uh, we have a fig called Albo from Italy ripening. It's a very early fig, and you can tell it's ripening right now. It's probably quite early. We also have uh, White Triana, which is similar to Canadria, putting out uh, quite a few figs. We have an air layer on that tree for a friend. So nothing to pick. We need to wait at least 10 more days for the White Triana. We also have Olympian here, swelling. So this is a bit of a glimpse, guys. I know we're not really doing too much harvesting, but this is, I guess, a, blip, a bit of a glimpse onto what we could be harvesting in the future. And like I said, you don't want to be picking all of these fruits right now because you won't have any later. <laughs> here is Fico Nita, which uh, it looks about ready. Like, you can, you can um, visually see that, but doesn't feel ready so we're not gonna pick it this fig in general just needs a whole lot of time to ripen way longer than um, I can give it way longer than what's possible here we have um, Calderwood unknown which I think I'm gonna let that one hang so far I'm thinking it's an LSU improved Celeste and not an LSU tiger like people have been um, alluding to 
And uh, I think that's mainly it. We have uh, a couple more figs turning color, but <clears throat> nothing is really ripe right here. If I go on the side of the house, I know we're going to find more. So we can do that in just a second. We get the harvest bowl. If you guys are still with me at this point in time, thank you. I'm sure a lot of people got bored at this point, way before this point, maybe in the first minute. <laughs> but uh, this is pretty good of a harvest. You know, we have um, quite a few things going on over here, you know, with figs that will ripen in time. But we also have eggplants, and the eggplants really took a hit. In fact, everything in this bed really took a hit and has been very challenging to get this all to ripen. You can see many tomatoes here. These are pink brandy wines, <clears throat> my favorite tomato. But it has a black spot on it, which is uh, blossom end rot. So what we did was I, I put down lime all over this bed in an attempt to increase the, I think it's magnesium, that will help prevent the blossom end rot. But you can see on these over here, there's nothing. So those will ripen pretty soon, I would think, in the next couple weeks. But these pink brandywine plants um, should give me decent production by the end of the year. And the same thing with the eggplant. But really far behind on those plants. And then we had cucumbers in here that just took off, put out many lemon cucumbers for me. And then we had um, melons, cantaloupes and honeydew that were taken off. And uh, these were also doing really well. And then all of a sudden we had some Fusarium wilt that came in and just knocked all these plants back really prevented a lot of melons uh, from ripening in my future. Look how pretty this one is. So some of these may ripen still, you know, even though most of them are, you know, have the disease on them in this, this location is really not great. And what I've been trying to do is just get rid of anything that is diseased and then move on and try to help the rest of the things in here by uh, removing that stuff. But let's get the bowl, guys, and go to the actual side of the house with somewhat of a harvest. It's really pretty, this, this bowl, I'm telling you, man. It's so rewarding. If you guys have never done something like this, where you're growing your own food and came out here, and I do this just about every morning, you know, I may not get the, uh, I may not get these big tomatoes as I do, but I will get everything else so far that I've harvested just about every day. Here we have Little Ruby, and you can see that one needs a bit more time. This fig is really becoming one of my favorites of the year. Here's one down here that's actually quite shriveled, a bit soft. Uh, it could have used a little bit more time, but we'll pick it. This one's a bit prone to insects. And other things getting into the eye because the eye is quite small. Now here is my LSU Tiger. And LSU Tiger, I have three of these. Um, and this guy is really looking quite different, especially this fig here. That's quite different than Calderwood, so who knows? And the leaf structure is a bit different too, I've noticed. Now we're on to the really, really heavy hitter stuff here. In this bed is, I just have volunteer tomatoes. We also planted a fig tree in this bed. <laughs> we had all kinds of uh, blackberries right here. And you can see we have another blackberry plant right in here and there's actually a few that are ripe. So we'll pick these. Get some really nice homegrown blackberries and the blackberries are quite late to ripen. They'll put out a nice uh, crop earlier in the season, but I found last year that that aligned with SWD. And uh, that way I was avoiding that and took out those plants that lined up with that. And I was left with um, Primark Freedom, which puts out really large berries. You can see it's finally just now putting out many of its um, second crop berries that you, put, you see on um, the Primacanes. So far, it's really not that productive and uh, a bit of a shame compared to my raspberries because the raspberries, guys, this is the second crop. They've given me a really large first crop and you can just see 
how ridiculous this is, especially compared to the blackberries. So we're going to come in here and harvest all of these um, because I, uh, I need to get especially these red ones, these dark red ones here. These have to be picked. If they're not picked and they're left on the ground, they could attract fruit flies, which could really cause problems. Uh, at this point in the season, guys, the birds are not bothering me. I don't know why, but we flicked the switch, harvested all my peaches, all my grapes, and the birds left. Here's some sun gold. And this is a volunteer of sun gold, so I didn't plant this. These sun gold tomatoes are better than the uh, better than the hybrid that you can get on seed catalogs and whatnot. I'm not kidding. I really, really like this sun gold more than the other one that I have that I planted from seed that I bought. We also have over here a melon. And we had two of melons. I picked one a little bit too early, so I've been very careful of when I'm gonna pick these guys. And I need a little bit more information on that one to know. I think I picked it really about where this one's at right now. We just dropped one of the tomatoes. But uh, really hoping that, I'll get that tomato later. Really hoping I can get a really fresh, tasty, fully ripe, melon this year that would be incredible so let's pick all these raspberries i guess and we'll just have a ridiculous harvest i think at the end here we only have um one or two figs that could be picked this is brown turkey california brown turkey that uh, i'm not a huge fan of and we're going to let this one ripen as long as humanly possible so we'll let that one stay there and see what happens but yeah I have about a hundred or so raspberries to pick and uh, yeah I don't know if you guys want to stay with me this whole time maybe I should end it here but these guys are insanely productive I'm telling you man crazy uh, and I'm getting these guys for most of the season. I'd say like 60%, 70% of the season, I'm harvesting handfuls, bowlfuls of raspberries, and it's it's uh, really, really good. So I guess we'll get a, a photo of this, and uh, I'll let you guys go. So thank you all for watching. I'm going to finish harvesting these raspberries without you guys. And uh, I'll talk to you all soon. All right? Take care.